Good evening and welcome to the February 25th, 2013 meeting of the Diana School Board. This is a regular meeting. We do have a quorum this evening. Uh, Member Scritner is joining us remotely. Uh, and the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. We had both a special and a regular meeting on January 28th and a special meeting on February 11th. May I have a motion, please, to approve those minutes? Move. Second. Moved and seconded to approve those minutes. Any additions or corrections to those minutes as written? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes uh, via roll call vote. Uh, Sarah? Aye. Bella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Neville? Aye. Patzloff? Aye. Scretner? Aye. Wallen Friedman? Aye. Thank you. Um, Rick, could you please walk us through tonight's agenda? You certainly can. We do have uh, some amendments to the agenda as well. Um, but we have our uh, recognitions again. A lot of good things going on in the United Public Schools. We'll recognize some of those players uh, that participate in our school district. We have a presentation from the Early Childhood Special Education Program. We do have an update on the 2013-14 strategic plan and our budget planning that uh, Margot Bach, our business director, and I will be providing. We have a variety of consent agenda items, the action items. Again, this is uh, quite a light agenda because it's at February time. We're doing a lot of planning. We have an uh, update on our capital projects, and um, we do have um, a change in our plans as far as approving the policies 211, 408. We're going to seek to table those, so I'd ask the board to note that. And then also we have some other policies we'll be using through discussion and then information. We do have one addition. And that would be um, number 10F, I guess it is, 10F. Under information will be a walk-in item as it relates to uh, student enrollment. And um, it's just an informational item because it's an administrative uh, recommendation. And that would conclude the agenda as presented. Thank you, Superintendent Dressen. Uh, next up, uh, can I get a motion to... Uh, Table both policy 211 and 408, uh, pending some uh, amendments to those, and also the insert insertion of 10F concerning enrollment. So moved, second. It's been moved and seconded to the to amend the agenda to insert those three items. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor uh, via roll call vote, Sarah? Aye. Aye. Meyer? Aye. Neville? Aye. Patzloff? Aye. Scrantner? Aye. Wallen Friedman? Aye. The agenda has been amended. Uh, next up, we have our recognitions this evening. Ask Kevin Liu to come up, please. <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight, Kevin. Uh, this is a very nice honor that uh, we're able to provide uh, you with some recognition for achieving a 36, the highest possible score on an ACT test. And um, that's amazing. So tell me a little bit about Kevin. Uh, how did you approach going into that test and what kind of drives you so hard on these academic world? Because I know you're one of those students that really likes to perform. Uh, I, I guess I just treat it like a regular test. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I prepared it for it a little bit by, by doing some practice tests ahead of time. But nothing like I didn't do anything super crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about plans for next year, Kevin. As you wind down your uh, career here at Edina High School, where where are you headed next year? What are some of your interest areas? Uh, next year, um, I think I might be doing some PSEO uh, to do some more study uh, in the sciences or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure. And what are some of your is sciences? One of your big interest areas? Yeah, probably science and science and math is what I like to do. So we also have some of our youngest learners out here, Kevin. They're three and four years old, and if they were good listeners, maybe they'd get some advice. But what do you have advice for some of those students who are maybe at a middle level or just starting that high school career? Here's a person that you've performed well and you, you work very hard. What, what advice do you have along the way for learning for them? Um, I guess most important thing is just work hard, study hard, and pays off. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to ask uh, Chair Meyer to, to recognize you formally, Kevin. 
<laughs> Kevin Liu, congratulations. congratulations. Chris Tower. Chris Tower is a fifth grade teacher at Concord Elementary. Last week, Chris was recognized uh, by connecting with kids as for his leadership work, which aligns well with this. Uh, earlier this calendar year, Chris was recognized by the National Science Teachers Association and has uh, received the annual Sil Sylvia Chagru Award. <laughs> um, Chris, you received it for a variety of reasons, but one of the big things is the way you bring science and you bring all that learning together. Let's talk a little bit about that. You have a passion for bringing all that learning uh, together for kids to make it as real as possible. Talk a little bit about the project you did that you're recognized for and your passion around that. It, it, I guess it all started with the science, um, with the, the garden, which was the catalyst. Um, but that started with the, the science program I had in the classroom, the environments. I was doing science that really didn't have a strong connection to the kids' personal world and interests. Um, the science was good, but um, we grew, grow plants and throw them out. And so I just, as a gardener, I knew we could do something more. And so I realigned the curriculum to um, look at soil testing, you know, growing the plants in the classroom and testing different variables. And that was the, the lesson plan, was the, that was the basis of the lesson plan that was submitted to the National uh, Science Teachers Association that someone thought I should get this award. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, because of re receiving this award, it also you've got some uh, nice bennies along the way that's going to help you and the district a little bit more. Yeah. It's, uh, it is nice uh, to have the hard work I think teachers do to be recognized. And uh, I will be going down to San Antonio in April for the uh, Science Teachers Conference, National Science Teachers Conference. Um, and participating in that for three days um, and staying a few extra days. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, along with it comes $1,000 that uh, I, I get to use as I see fit. And um, my plans are to buy a camera. Imagine that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and they do cover part of the travel down there. So, um, But you know, I, I think this isn't about me being yeah. up here, yeah, and, it, and it's about some of the, the so kids you, back there. I have some support yeah. back there. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to say thanks to <laughs> Claire and Grace and Suzanne and the Wanderies. Uh, you know. Come on up. Can we, we, got, we got time tonight. Yeah. I got, you know, and there's, there's there, a lot of people that helped with this. There is they, one they uh, student who's not here, and that's Brian Wandry, who is a senior this year. and. Uh, Brian's sister is here, uh, Suzanne, who is in my class this year. But Brian, um, for his Boy Eagle Scout project, helped me get this project off the ground. He built the garden, a lot of the garden plots, uh, the fencing, um, and really kept me to task because he was so organized. And I was like, this is good for me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, these guys got their hands dirty last year, um, planting. and uh, and. I'm starting next week to uh, test soils and start things growing already, so it's, um, it's, uh, it's good stuff. Well, Chris Schauer, congratulations. Congratulations also, because this was a team event, but uh, we do want to recognize Chris, uh, so I ask Chair Meyer to come forward. Thank you, students, for being here. <laughs> Amanda Schutz. Is Amanda, I thought, I, there she is. Welcome, Amanda. Amanda's an ESL teacher and an AVID teacher, study skills teacher at the high school, and is recently being recognized for achieving national board certification. Again, this is an advanced training that is very research-based and has brought a lot of success to student learning. Amanda, what gave you that passion to go after national boards? Hmm, yeah, I think it was twofold. Um, one is just continuing to better your you know my practice as a teacher and wanting to examine how I'm teaching what I'm teaching and why I'm doing it and that it definitely gave me the opportunity to do that and Edina also offers a great incentive if within their teacher contract to go after the national board um, certification it's a it's a hard thing to achieve and um, you're not guaranteed that you're gonna achieve it after the first time you try so um, yeah I think those two pieces really worked worked for me and 
it was either national board or a second master's, so I went national <laughs> board. So. National board, good. So you also teach in you know, probably what some people would call non-traditional courses or courses that aren't necessarily the core. Uh, again, I know you have a deep passion for that. Talk a little bit about the courses that you do teach, the students that you work with, and what drives you so hard uh, in that, that world of success. I, and it's funny you mention that because I do think, I didn't know anyone who had achieved national board within that ESL field. Um, they call it English as a new language. So that was a, a piece of it too. So I teach students at Edina who are from a multitude of countries and they speak a variety of languages. For example, in, in one of my classes of 13, there I think there's around nine languages spoken. So it's very diverse. I adore my students and we have a lot of fun. And so I think bringing some light to what we do in that course and showing the rigor that we do in the um, programs and assessments and the you know keeping them um, to high standards is important and this is my first year teaching AVID and so I think I bring the things I learned in achieving uh, national board um, and working on my national board certification to that AVID class as well and holding all of those students um, at a high standard and knowing that they're going to mo move on to four year college institutions. So AVID is a lot around study skills type, learning their skills and, and pushing them. How do you do that? I mean, I think that's the question. Nine languages, you know, and students are... Hands. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I mean, you know, it, it is a challenge and, and you're very successful. These kids are very, have a strong desire to learn and be successful, but what is that technique or how do you create that communication? Well, it truly is a, a little bit of drama <laughs> at the front of the classroom. You have to um, be okay with acting out things, especially for students at a, a new to the country level, level one. Um, but in both classes, AVID and ESL, it's just that commitment to meeting students where they're at and also knowing, holding them to the standard and saying, you're going to be here by the end. And um, you know, I think I think my experience in the in the past. I was in the Peace Corps, and I was in. Um, I've lived abroad, and that really bringing that to the table with students um, really helps them. I don't speak, you know, Spanish fluently. I don't speak Somali fluently, but at the same time, the experiences I've had in the countries I've lived in really help me within the classroom. And I think meeting students again, making them feel comfortable is is my first priority. Great, Amanda. Congratulations, That's Chair Meyer. To Get that photo up. Thank you, Amanda. Next up, we have some young guests who've been waiting patiently. I'd ask uh, Penny Codridge, Director of Special Services, to uh, introduce our guests, and uh, we welcome them tonight. Good evening. Um, because Lisa Hawthorne is new before the board and for our viewing audience. Uh, she joined our team as the coordinator for early childhood special education and she also coordinates the district preschool screening and thought it would be appropriate to give an introduction because she is new before you and I think they will have um, an exciting presentation to show you regarding our early childhood special education program. And just to remind you that our ECSC program begins at birth for children that have developmental delays. And so for many, many families, actually hundreds of families over the years, it is their first introduction or their first gateway into the Edina Public Schools. So I'm gonna turn the microphone over to Lisa and she will introduce her guest. Thank you, Penny. Thanks, um, members of the school board and Superintendent Dressen. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, to, to show off some of the great things that we do in early childhood special education. Um, to my right, I'm with Kelly Trichest, and she is a parent educator and um, a liaison between Edina family education and special education. And to my left is Erin Anderson, and she is a teacher in our four-year-old collaborative class with early childhood family ed and early childhood special ed. And Erin's gonna address or introduce some of the guests that we have brought, especially for tonight. Um, if you just turn to my right, I'm going to introduce you some of my students and their families, um, and I'll have them stand when I call their name. Claire is here with her mom and dad, Melanie, in the back, and her dad, Ben. I also have Wyatt and his mom um, as well. <laughs> and then Aiden and his mom, Allison, are over here. And they're going to help bring out some surprises um, for each of you at the end of our presentation. 
So tonight we're going to show you a video. It's called Early Childhood Special Education. Did you know?
And now we have a special surprise for you. you've been. <laughs> we are getting special invites to come down and visit their classrooms, yes. among other things, so we pretty special night here. So Wyatt, Claire, and Aiden, thank you and your parents so much for participating in our evening. Um, it is wonderful to collaborate with you as parents and other early childhood parents that are here and staff. We appreciate your support in our great program, so thank you. Are there any questions? Enrollment thank up, down, maybe Penny has more of a historical uh, It's a okay, it's, it's a steady increase over the years, not rapid increase. Um, what is up is our enrollment of those that are under three. That is a, a large growth, so that would suggest, of course, that um, we're going to continue to grow now in terms of the total program if that uh, projection continues. Thanks, Jen. Thank you for the video. I thought the most impressive fact to me was that 2,000 day yeah. from the time you're born until the time you start kindergarten. That just doesn't seem like a very long time yeah. when you put it that way. Yeah. Such an incredible program. Um, I just, I've had a child go through it and I just, and you guys do incredible work and it takes a really special group of people to do what you do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Next up, we have our 2013-14 uh, strategic and budget plans. Yeah, they did a good thing. Yeah, you know, now we have to do budget. <laughs> I know. I know, exactly. Everybody left. Good evening, board members and uh, community members. I'm um, going to give you a quick flyover of our strategic plan, our budget plans, as we are uh, very deep into uh, getting ready for the 2013-14 school year. Um, and again, where we are in our journey is really taking a look at uh, 
probably the best example is the students that were here before us because our role as a school district is to prepare those students uh, for the world they're going to live in. Uh, with those students that we're walking around here are going to be working through 2065. They'll be living in the 21st and 22nd century and our commitment uh, to them and to all the students involved in our schools today and into the future is to make sure that they're ready and that we have them ready for the world they're going to live in. And uh, we are very proud of the work we're doing. We're going to do it uh, in a very uh, traditional way that Edina has always done it around partnerships, which is our engine of working together with families, working together with the community, working with students, working with our staff, uh, coming together. Uh, communications is so critical and there's so many different ways to communicate. I think the video just uh, typified that that tool that's out there and the different ways we need to stay connected, especially when we're talking about change and how we uh, make sure our students are successful. Data is a big piece of our work, how important it is that uh, we make sure we have measurable data, data that can be successful for um, ensuring that we're seeing the necessary progress and that we can advance students at the rate they're ready to advance. And finally, it's about leadership. It's about uh, the many, many people who are involved in leading and guiding. Again, we saw that on display tonight number of people who are involved in leadership and that will get us to our mission of all for all. Uh, we have major commitments and again you've seen many of these uh, but I do want to highlight the fact that uh, we will be next month coming forward with recommendations on an improvement plan to ensure that we are closing gaps where there are gaps or as it relates to achievement or access or opportunity and uh, making sure all kids are advancing. So this all for all initiative is really about all students and that'll be a big rollout that we'll be bringing forward next year. Also next year, uh, we'll be beginning a study around our early childhood elementary programming. And so this is again a year long study in 2013-14. Um, and we'll also be taking a look at time differently as well as how do we maximize the funds we have available. The third area of partnership relates to our communication plan and next month you'll also receive an update uh, on how our communications will be rolling out. Uh, we have a plan in place that the board learned more about at a workshop earlier tonight, but we'll be formally uh, having the board uh, accept that report uh, at the March board meeting. And finally, a, sc a school facility improvement plan that the board will be taking a look at uh, later this spring and then approving uh, midsummer. Uh, again, will shape our major commitments going forward. Uh, as we look at our vision, for the future as it relates to communications, there's some major themes that will be uh, drawing us forward around making sure we stay connected, again, because this is such a key part of our success story. Uh, when we look at the budgeting plans going forward and staffing and our strategic goals and our calendar, we do want to give the board a quick update, recognizing that uh, our enrollment projections are something that we monitor very closely, and uh, we're also very controlled by what happens at the legislative session. You've heard me say it before, about 85% of the work that we do is uh, directed by work that occurs in St. Paul through state statute or the Department of Education in Roseville. Um, the other piece around this is that the legislative session will be determining funding over the next two years. About 70% of our funds comes from funds that are directed through the legislative session. As we look at funding, uh, we know going forward that we're going to take a look at all areas of our funds because we are in a challenging situation and so we need to take a look at that as an opportunity. It relates to both the revenue and the expenditure side. There are many different components to the funding side, but how do we make sure all our funds are aligned? Uh, this is a graph that if you uh, can take a look out and I maybe can have Margo explain this graph a little bit uh, for you as it relates to our fund balance in the general fund. As you take a look at 12-13, uh, that's where we're currently budgeted, and then 13-14 is what we're projecting forward. The red line is the base proposal. And then we're also taking a look at the governor's budget and then also if we make some budget adjustments. So those are the variations from the other line. And you can see that the, uh, whether it's revenue generation or expenditure adjustments or a combination of both, you can see that that helps uh, change that trajectory a little bit. And so that's what our process is now. We're just having conversations about what types of adjustments, whether it's revenue generation or expenditure adjustments, can we do in 13, 14 that help us ongoing uh, in 14, 15 and beyond, and then continue to monitor the legislative session and any, o any other areas that impact the district uh, financially. We have uh, checked with other districts uh, and what they're seeing in their own budgets and their planning 
um, one, two, and three years out. And uh, the majority of districts that we talk to are, are seeing the same type of situation. Many are, are hanging on having a re referendum at some point in time around 14, 15. Many are using a fund balance in 13, 14, and, and then having to make adjustments in 14, 15. So we are looking at a two-year budget plan uh, for next year, but also again for 14-15. Uh, this is the challenge that we face. Uh, again, maybe Margo can address what we're looking at here when we look at these kind of numbers. We try to target around 8% uh, fund balance right now, and the board's fund balance policy is six minimum, 8%, uh, an additional 2% for cash flow. Uh, we typically, historically, have ranged anywhere between six and 12, so we just try to uh, some years it can be higher and lower. We're projected to be just a slightly under 10% as of June 30th, 2013. The base plan, which does not include uh, an increase in funding, um, does show that we would go down in fund balance to about that 8% level in 13-14 if we make no adjustments and also receive no additional revenue from the state. And then in 14-15, if we make no adjustments, and uh, receive no additional revenue, then that fund balance dips below our policy level. The same information then, okay, sorry, go ahead. In the governor's plan um, or any changes legislatively and then uh, budget adjustments would change those um, numbers accordingly. And we are expecting some increases in revenues, again, not enough to offset that, so we're gonna have to be creative and aggressive in uh, making sure we maximize our available funding uh, so what we are in the process right now of in uh, February taking a look at a two-year plan uh, and the approach again in a work session earlier tonight uh, the board reviewed that process and uh, we will be coming back to the board in March uh, with a more uh, clearly defined plan as it, as it rolls out. We'll also know more at a legislative level what's, what's occurring but we've set some targets of what we need to make sure we accomplish uh, going forward. We'll also start looking at uh, instructional uh, or class size uh, approaches so that we can finalize that and be talking about that in February or in March. And then we'll also be identifying what we call the Berg items, budget reduction, revenue generation, reallocation of funds, different ways that we can uh, make sure we're maximizing those funds. So we'll be doing a lot of information sharing uh, with the board, with the staff, uh, with the public and how we're uh, getting access to these funds and aligning them to our growth areas as it relates to learning. Uh, April will be our month when we start developing the proposed plan and making recommendations to the board, and then we'll have a budget approval in uh, June. Again, the, the various areas of funding that we're looking at. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention as we, we continue to look at uh, plans for the future. Uh, we're also uh, growing our network. Um, Edina has been uh, asked to participate in what's called 21st Century Consortium. These are top performing school districts throughout the United States and uh, we'll be able to benchmark against these districts not only in funding but some of our strategic initiatives. They're going to be a key players for us as we continue to roll out our secondary study and our elementary study. Uh, but these are all high performing districts in various parts of the country and we're excited to be joining them. Uh, along with the, the colleagues and the benchmarking we're able to do in the state, we think there's a good value with this. And then next year we'll start looking internationally how we start benchmarking so that we re do want to become not only nationally recognized but internationally recognized. And this will give us a great uh, springboard to allow us to do that. That gives the board a quick flyover of uh, the work that we're doing as it relates to strategic work, uh, also as it relates to how we're continuing to roll out our funding challenges. Questions or comments? We have seen this at a couple of workshops already. Discussions? Thank you both. Thank you. Next up, we have our uh, consent agenda. And a motion, please. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded uh, to approve our consent agenda. Uh, Rick, do you have access to that that you could walk us through? I sure do. Uh, it's a personnel recommendations. Uh, it's also that time of year where we have a variety of staff who have announced their plans to uh, retire at the end of the school year. And so we'll be wishing them well and formally recognizing them uh, later this uh, school year. 
but we commend them uh, for their great work. Uh, we also have um, expenditures payable uh, for uh, February. We have the minutes that were amended from uh, January 7th, uh, accommodations for the people that we met earlier tonight, a variety of field trips, including the van going to Singapore, um, but a variety of, again, some of the national and international reach our students get to experience uh, through their good fortune, uh, a variety of gifts, which once again we thank, and uh, that would conclude the consent agenda items that also failed to mention at the beginning of the meeting that we do have guests from the Valley View government class, and we welcome them tonight. I'll be joining their class later in uh, March, and we'll have guests uh, continuing from this class joining us in March and April as part of their work in understanding local government. So we welcome them tonight as well. Thank you, Rick. Any discussion on our consent agenda? Uh, seeing none, can we proceed with the roll call? Sarah, please. Almar? Aye. Sela? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Neville? Aye. Hetzla? Aye. Screntner? Aye. Wallen Friedman? Aye. Thank you. The motion passes. Uh, next up, we have our capital project requests. Uh, can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. We moved and seconded uh, to approve our capital project request for 2013 14. Um, we did review this earlier. Uh, Margo, could you just give us a recap? Uh, yes, sure. The um, capital projects are necessary. We have a process to go through uh, application. We review them based on criteria. Um, I also presented information on anticipated capital budget. Um, this approval is just specifically for those project areas that we need to get started with quotes and bids in order to be able to have um, either repair done starting July 1, right at the end of the school year, or in the case of textbooks, orders placed so we have those books for the start of school, that kind of thing. Um, I don't anticipate a lot of changes in the capital budget, uh, but the all of the components of the budget will be included in the information you receive regarding all funds in May and June. Was there any change from the this printout that we saw at our last meeting? There's been no change. Okay, thank you. Additional discussion or questions? Seeing none, we'll have the roll call. Almag? Aye. Zella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Neville? Aye. Patzloff? Aye. Scrutner? <coughs> Aye. Wallen Friedman? Aye. Thank you all. Uh, next up, we have our Cornelia Elementary School 2013 paving upgrades. Can I have a motion, please? Move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. A uh, little background, please, Margo. Both this project and the project uh, next on the agenda with Creek Valley, Valley are, are part of our 10-year alternative facilities plan. I'm happy to report that both came in under budget uh, due to getting out in the bid market earlier. Um, we heard from vendors that they hadn't, they didn't have work for spring yet, and so they were aggressive. We we got aggressive bids, which is good. And um, it, ironically, both bids are the same company, and we did have this company last year for Southview, and I would uh, recommend approval of both. Thank you. And uh, this is the uh, all the blacktop surfaces on the on those uh, for those schools. Uh, yes. Any changes as far as layout or? Uh, there may be one change at Crete Valley due to the fact that uh, the budget came in so, so much lower, we may be able to make an accommodation in, in Creek Valley in a drive area. Great, additional uh, discussion? So I, I take it we like the work they did already? Yes. And the fact that we came on in under budget for both of those projects, are we um, able then to use the cost savings to other projects or because these are things that are reviewed by the Department of Education, are we able to use that money? We would be able to use this money for anything um, under the review and comment. So for example, uh, we're doing Concord HVAC, if there was a component of that bid process that came in over or some other project that was approved, we would be able to use that. So for reporting. anything that was approved for the, this school year, we would be able to, or in, in the, the review, two year cycle. The two year, because the, two -year the review cycle. and comment okay. was for two years. All right, thank you. Additional discussion? 
All those in favor of uh, a roll call vote for the Cornelia <laughs> Elementary School, uh, please proceed, Sarah. <laughs> Almost got me. Almog? Aye. Sella? Aye. Uh, Meyer? Aye. Neville? Aye. Petzloff? Aye. Scrutner? Aye. Welland Friedman? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next up, as we just discussed, is the Creek Valley em Elementary School 2013 paving upgrades. Can I get a motion, please? Moved. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded uh, to approve the Creek Valley uh, paving. Any discussion? See so now we'll proceed to a vote. Sarah? Almack? Aye. Sella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Neville? Aye. Fatzloff? Aye. Scrutner? Aye. Wallen Friedman? Aye. Motion passes, thank you all. Uh, next up we have 2013-14 uh, school day modifications for Edina High School. Uh, Gwen? Uh, moved. Can I have a motion? <laughs> <laughs> been moved, can I get a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, yes, each year the high school, <clears throat> excuse me, has to, um, needs to modify their schedule because of the tests that um, our high schoolers take such as the plan test or the PSAT wow. test and instead of having all of the students come to school um, what we suggest is that the schedule is modified depending on the type of test that is given for some student for example the MCA tests are given to our 10th and 11th graders so the suggestion is that our 12th graders would um, start school at 11 o'clock which is when the testing is completed and we've been doing this each year for several years that is the recommendation. And then there's also one additional piece. We originally had commencement scheduled for June 8th of 2014, and we were having trouble finding a location. So the recommendation is to move graduation from Sunday, June 8th to Monday, June 9th, 2014. And that would be the target center still? Is that the target center? Yes. And, and we won't have a problem with the seniors, uh, with those changes. The seniors are still going to have enough uh, time in school. Yes, they will. Thank you, Gwen. Additional discussion? Keep in mind, all these changes are for the 13-14 uh, school year. Right. Any, uh, no, no additional discussion? Vote, please, Sarah. Almog? Aye. Sella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Neville? Aye. Petzloff? Aye. Scrutner? Aye. Wallen Friedman? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Uh, we had two additional items that have been tabled uh, policy 211 and policy 408. Uh, is there any background or discussion the board should be aware of as a part of that? Yes, in reviewing 211 and 408 for an additional time, we've already had this before the board for discussion, but we did have some additional wording to make the policies more clear. The original intent behind 408 is to separate some of the references to employees from 211 regarding civil action and subpoena and place it in the personnel section of policies. So as we're pulling that apart, we wanted to make sure that the separation was as clean as it could be. So we have some recommended wording. It'll come back before the board in our March meeting. Great, and we'll see a revised version prior to that. Yes. Additional discussion around those items. Next, uh, we're on to our regular uh, discussion items. Uh, we have uh, policies 217, 401, and 402. Anybody care to chime in? Okay, policy 217. So this is all part of the r routine and ongoing review process. Um, again, quite straightforward, uh, s some minor tweaks and twists uh, to update it and build some consistency. One of the larger changes to 217 is taking a look at different types of language that discuss board positions. We had three different designations for board resolution, a directional position, and an advisory position. In discussing those particular designations, the policy committee uh, talked about the fact that there probably isn't a need for three different designations. So we're trying to simplify and clean up how that policy works. Let's see, 401. 
Can we, before we go, can I? Yes. You knew it was going to be me. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is your time. <laughs> um, in section, we have 3B in that section that says once the school board adopts the legislative initiatives, board members and employees can speak publicly in compliance with policy 107. That's in 3B, but then we also have language down in. Yeah. In, I don't know, just underneath that's, and uh, that's highlighted in yellow, that seems to be the same language. And I'm worried, I'm just wondering, does the highlighted stuff, does that go out because it's the exact same language? I, I'm going to catch up in board book. I'm looking at our notes from policy. So it's on, it's on page 107 and 108, if you want to look in board book, yeah. Okay. And then my question is, I would assume that the highlighted stuff is just duplication, but I still have a question. It says, that you may speak publicly on behalf if you're in compliance with 107, and then I'm assuming what you're referencing in 107 is that you need approval of the Director of Communications. Is that the part we're talking about? Because if that's what it means, I think we should be more explicit in this policy for people who aren't going to cross-reference and go look at 107 if that's what we really right. want them to do. If it's one thing specifically, we can take a look at that and clarify it at our next meeting. Okay, and then I had one more in the very last section of that policy, E, on page 108. Um, it says, and I know this is a hard section that we've struggled with because mm -hmm. this is the one where what hat are you wearing and what are you saying, but we're saying if the position taken by the school board member or the district employee promotes the district's mission but does not formally represent the position of the district, you can use your title but not represent it as the district's position. And I know that's better than what we have. But I still don't think that's really clear because I don't really know what I, I don't really know what I could say right. as right. a school board member. So I'm promoting the district's mission, and I'm talking as a school board member, but I'm not really speaking for the school board. I just think it still needs to be tightened up. We will take a look at that. We'll meet again on Friday. Good points. Okay. Uh, anything else on that one? 402. Should we look oh. at 401? 401. 401. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. We have Okay, 401. 401 didn't have as many changes. Basically, it's cleanup of language. But are there any questions? I have a really, really picky thing, and I'm even right. sorry to bring it up, but it's. <laughs> You know me. 2A, we talk about we've added in the word and. We're going to provide an equal employment opportunity. Equal employment opportunity is a term of art legally, and it doesn't take an article in front of it. So you don't have an and. You just provide, provide employment, equal, equal employment, employment opportunity. opportunity. So, Thank you. Any other notes? Not on that one. Or any other notes from this side as well? <laughs> All right. And then 402. I think maybe I don't have anything on 402. Here, I don't. Oh. OK, well, it's general language cleanup. And they, um, part of what the policy committee is reviewing through all of the language when we take a look at flow and simplicity with the policy is taking a look at redundancies. Often in policy, we will reference school district, and we may reference it multiple times. So this policy is an example of trying to eliminate the word school once school district has been introduced in a paragraph. You strike it and then simply refer to district in all subsequent references within a paragraph. But no other substantive changes recommended in 402. Thank you all. Additional comments, questions regarding that information? Uh, next up we have uh, key initiatives. Anything there? Uh, just some, uh, again, some minor changes, updating the strategic plan that we reviewed earlier tonight uh, around those initiatives and the lines better with uh, the timing now that we're further into the plan. Again, the plan was approved in July of 2012. We're six months into it, and administration is able to make a better assessment of how we could roll that forward. And so it's the first reading. Okay. Questions, comments? Have a few other informational items. 
Any other uh, announcements? Anybody? Anybody? A motion to adjourn? Moved. Seconded. So moved and seconded. Any objection to adjourning at this time? Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you all.